today is Leo day. Why? Because Leo is broke, just like me. Every day is Leo day. And what better way to celebrate our goddess of wisdom and economics than by psychoanalyzing the depths of her insecurities and struggles without her consent by analyzing her song. Ah, another Leo day, another demolished weed. By the way, sometimes you find edible plants among the weeds. Please do not eat the weeds. I am just saying. Ano bando, or that band, is the iconic song that turned our blob bochi from I see to I see. Girl fingered that guitar so hard on stage, you cannot help but wonder the amount of fingering practice she did in her dark, dark closet. Deep dark secret aside, today we will be looking at the legendary That Band by Kesokobando, the song that gave goosebumps to a worldwide audience, showed everyone the true guitar hero. As Bochi played her guitar, the audience shrunk back in awe, then Bochi said, nah, we'd win, and Bochi the Rocked all over the audience. This was a true Bochi the Rock. Bullshit aside, as before, I've made alterations with my garbage Japanese abilities to an existing translation, so do tell me in the comments if you find any mistakes. To get right to the point, I think Anobando is most likely a song about Leo's inner thoughts and struggles, in particular, her perspective of being a creator. And speaking of creators, this creator right here just started a streaming channel and plans to play JRPGs, sing karaoke, yes there will be bochi karaoke, <coughs> and even game with you guys and stuff like Mario Kart, so come check it out if you're interested. Leo would approve of my shilling, I'm sure. I know many people will say, Canonically, Bochi writes all the songs, which is true. So I'm gonna frame it this way. I think this song is about Leo's feelings, but you can interpret it as either Leo expressing herself or Bochi's interpretation of Leo's feelings. Honestly, after many readovers, there is potentially even a way you could say it's Bochi feelings instead of Leo. But I'll go over the entire song first assuming it's Leo's feelings, then we'll have a look at how it could fit Bochi and discuss whether Bochi or Leo writing it seems to fit more. We begin with public humiliation. Wait, wrong script. We begin immediately with Liu listening to a mysterious other band, that band. Liu feels as if their songs, their music is laughing at her, looking down on her. That band's songs are described as shrilling, ringing, the piercing sounds of a railroad crossing. Liu really said, I don't know what in God's name that band is playing, but it's clear Miss Professional Bassist here finds it unbearable to hear. We continue to the pre-chorus, and with both the previous mentioning of the railroad crossing and this whole MV setting at a railroad crossing, it's pretty obvious the whole song is trying to use the railroad and train as a metaphor for something. The pre-chorus has Liu tell a mysterious person not to push her, because the train is coming soon. Oh shit, wait, no, 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 no! Okay, but this is what Liu actually fears though. Getting run over by Tom, well, dying. In the anime, there is a certain famous renowned quote by our grass-demolishing, jellyfish-haired bassist. Abandoning your uniqueness is equivalent to dying. And it's pretty clear Ryo isn't just saying it to Bochi, but personally feels very strongly about this. To the point of fighting with and breaking up with her own band, because they started taking their lyrics in a more commercial direction instead of their original straightforward style. It's at this point that it dawned on me. I think that band could be referring to her old band before she left. The band that turned their lyrics into generic positive nonsense with no soul. That's why their music became unbearable for Leo to listen to. As if looking down on her uniqueness. As if insulting her as a person. When we look at these words, don't push me forwards, it's a bit harder to see in English but there's essentially a double meaning here. Pushing someone forward can mean pushing physically, but can also mean pushing them forward mentally, as in trying to give them a positive message to help them move forward. But Liu rejects this, because to her, using these fake encouraging words that doesn't express her true feelings is like pushing her off onto the railroads when the train is already coming soon. You can also interpret this in another way, with Liu telling others not to push her forward to become more successful in a commercial sense, because if she does, to Liu, it's the equivalent to abandoning her identity as a person. It's equivalent to getting run over by the train, dying. I say all this, but I do want you to keep in mind that this mysterious band's identity doesn't have to be Leo's old band. But can we talking about popular bands that write generic positive lyrics with no soul in general? Leo hates them all the same, and the message sent would be exactly the same. But I do like the idea that the band is Leo's old band, because it makes this song a lot more personal for Leo. And, well, that would actually make Arobando a diss track. I always knew that the demolisher of weeds would be built for thug life. 
We move on to the- Nah, I'd win! We move on to the chorus, where Liu closes her eyes and runs away from the dark, dark world, where happiness is just an illusion. An interesting thing to point out is right after Liu points out the train is approaching soon, we see the train pass by at sonic speed in the MV. Good thing she didn't get pushed. Bro would have been flying like Team Rocket Angry Bird style. This whole dynamic between Liu's feelings, the idea of dying and the train, makes me feel like the train represents that band's journey. Liu is suffering on the inside, saying not to push her into someone else's journey, a place where she doesn't belong because it would remove her of her uniqueness, it would kill her. If you want to stretch it a bit, you could even hypothesize that back then, when Liu's standpoints and values weren't as firm as they are now, seeing the commercial success made it tempting for Liu to abandon herself and do it for the money. To be fair, she does like money, hence her telling that band to not push her, because deep inside, she didn't want to lose herself. I think this kind of doubt is really common in real life. Many people have successful friends or enemies, they look at themselves and start to question, what am I doing? Is this really the right path? Especially when money is involved, and you start to ask yourself what you truly value. And so as the train approaches, she doesn't get pushed into the train. She doesn't get caught up in that band's path, and instead closes her eyes and covers her ears. For many reasons, she hates seeing that band's journey. Maybe it's seeing music, the things she loves, get tarnished. Maybe it's seeing this commercially method she hates succeed. Maybe it's even temptation or jealousy of that success. Either way, the only thing she can do is hide in a corner like a 10 year old when their parents are fighting and close her eyes. As she closes her eyes, she sees a light. Oh my god, it's Nijika and Jason! This light cast upon the darkness actually has a slightly different meaning in Japanese. Just, uh, there's no word for it in English. Official Bochi translations will call it Halo, but what Goku actually refers to is this light from Buddha that shines upon kind, noble people as a form of assurance. You can think of it as a holy light that shines upon good people. It doesn't have to be physical light either. No, wait, I can't touch light. It can just be a shining, holy feeling you get from good people, as if they were saints. Like, think about the vibe Nijika gives off. Like, like that. My angel! In the context of this song, I'd imagine this light to be from Ryo herself. A way to say that her ideal to truly express herself with her songs and not convert to commercial garbage is the correct way. As she closes her eyes, she gains comfort within herself. As she covers her ears, she hears just her heartbeat. And this heart sways her body. It is her own heartbeat, her own self, that can excite her. Give her that creator satisfaction. It goes to show how much she values being herself, not getting washed away by the waves of normalcy. We can even see this with her many eccentric habits like eating grass, sending Nijika a goddamn video to ask what to eat for dinner, etc. She will be herself to the very end, and I really respect it. Maybe I should eat weed. Yet you feel a tint of sadness, suffering, when you have to not look, not hear anything when the train comes by. Liu only wants to hear her own music. She doesn't want to see or hear whatever the world is saying. She only wants the true message she's trying to express. And because of this, she resorts to running from reality, closing her eyes, covering her ears. It's as if she's rejecting the world itself for her ideal of individuality. I think we can see this struggle when Liu talks about her previous band breakup, where she mentioned after the fight, she started hating the whole ideas of the band in the first place. I'm sure to see your band go down a path you hate and to choose your own path. It must feel like fighting the world, and I can't blame Liu for rejecting the world, rejecting the very idea of bands at that point. Continuing on to the second verse, Liu describes her past experience, looking for a place where she belonged in the dissonance. Dissonance is a very interesting choice of words because it can mean conflict between people, but is also a musical term that describes two musical notes that basically TLDR sound bad together. You know, bad synergy, like cock and chili. The context here is a double meaning. Liu was looking in a place where she belonged, within a place with conflict, within a place where their ideals for music didn't even match. And while some may think sad songs are too emo or depressing, and sound like that one 15 year old goth boy that listens to Linkin Park every day without headphones at school, sad songs are important to Liu because she was saved by one. We don't know any backstory to this, but it's not hard to imagine. Many people listen to depressing songs to feel like someone can relate to them, to feel understood. Like me for real, for real. Yet despite how she holds this sad song dear to her, despite her hatred for irresponsibly written happy lyrics without heart, 
She acknowledges that that band's happy songs, fake words, are a cast to someone. Those happy lyrics she hates so much also saved someone. That's also not hard to imagine. Holy shit, look at idol fans! I think some of them rely on their idol's holy light for oxygen! One I love you would turn them from humans to cave monkeys. A drip of idol sweat would extend their life expectancy by 20 years. One handshake would warrant an amputation to store their hand lifetime in an airtight jar. Some people just want happy lyrics to encourage them instead of depressing lyrics to feel related to when they're depressed and hey, fair enough. Live as you will. It seems as though everyone's already decided. Okay, maybe don't. This acknowledgement that the fake happy lyrics are also important starts to cast self-doubt upon Ryo. Is she the weird one for not finding comfort in encouraging words? Is she weird for not being emotionally touched by the smiles in these words? Is she wrong for wanting to be herself? Combined with the past band experience, she starts to feel that she's the one in the wrong. The only here. Sang as a back vocal is amazing. It changes the sentence from I'm wrong to I'm the only one that's wrong. It adds to the feeling of being an outcast for thinking this way, as if the world is rejecting her uniqueness, as if she's alone in this struggle. And the way only is the singular word sang as a backup vocal not just emphasizes how lonely it must feel to be alone in that position, but also hints at how this singular lyric, only, could have perhaps only been sung inside her heart and not out loud in this song. Just to further emphasize how she alone is wrong compared to the world. She's so lonely, like an abandoned dog. What do we call that? Oh, a bit. We then move on to the second chorus where Thomas comes again. G G God damn it, Thomas! How many times do I have to tell you? The kid is scared! Shut no, once again, rejecting that band, rejecting conformity closes herself from that band's songs, the ones that feel like five-year-old chalkboards screeching to her. Yet there is one small difference, the end. The one small but crucial line that leads up to the bridge, I don't need it. While she still rejects, runs away from the conformity of that band after the acknowledgments that that band is needed by someone, she reaffirms herself that her own sounds, her own music, is the only one she needs, and proceeds to say, I don't need it. I don't need anything else. I don't need anyone else's music. Based. Chad. I bow to you, my brother. Kesokubando, the only music we need. Let's go commit band genocide. This is the first sign of confidence we've seen from Leo. After all that self-doubt and calling herself the only one who's wrong, she decides and declares that she truly doesn't need anyone else's music. See, this is why meditation is important. You get to reflect on how correct you are, especially for using your friend's body as a cash cow. This video is sponsored by OnlyFans. I personally think that this entire self-doubt reassurance process fits Ryo's personality very well. While her aloof side may give her the image of a calm, cocky musician, cases like her spiral of doubt when her past band went separate ways, and how she acted strong but was apparently traumatized by her past school festival performance really reflects what Ryo is like as a person. As any person would, she had, she has doubts on herself. She might not be as confident as she looks. She's not immune to sad emotions as the coup d'etat expressions and intonations may indicate, but at the end of the day, she is someone that is capable of not giving in and sticking to her ideals. And the bridge proves this by being a complete parallel to the past two choruses. Leo states once again to those seemingly blissful lyrics not to push her forwards, followed by a direct warning. Don't touch my heart so lightly. I really like the dichotomy of this very sentence and the past two choruses. While all we've seen Ryo do so far is basically shut herself away from the world mentally for the sake of sticking up to her ideals, this is a direct confrontation to the problem, a direct confrontation to what she's rejected for so long. The very first don't push me forwards at the beginning was followed by a statement full of fear, fear that she would become what she hated. Fear that she was the one in the wrong. But what followed the second one was the polar opposite, a beautiful parallel. A statement telling that band not to touch her heart so lightly, because her ideals of writing true meaningful lyrics from the heart will not be wavered. This is continued by Ryo successfully boarding the train, successfully not dying, with her as the only passenger. Unlike the previous trains, which were that band's, someone else's journey, this train, this journey belongs to her and her alone. That's why she's the only passenger on this train. 
as she boards it and it departs. I believe what Leo wants to say with the train metaphor is, Watch the road, kids! Don't get run over! Everyone has their own path. There is no need to board someone else. Board someone else's train. Because Liu has decided that even if she walks this unknown path, chasing her dream in solitude, it's okay. Because this journey is hers alone. And that is what gives it meaning. That is what gives her her individualism, the soul of her path. With this acceptance, Liu begins her own journey by becoming a Muppet. She claps her hands, symboling these are the sounds only she can make. The sounds are mine alone. Sounds only she is capable of making. Because her sound, the heart of her music, is unique to her. And with the music of her heart, she does- What pretty footprints we have here. Kimi, Leo leaves her marks behind like a bitch. I hope not literally. By stomping until footprints are left behind. I like the indications of leaving footprints behind. It implies that her path will leave a mark behind in history. That her own individualistic path will not be one she just walks herself, but one she will keep moving forward on until she does achieve something, leave something behind. And with this newfound confidence, she can open her eyes and directly face that band's train. She doesn't need to close her eyes, hide herself from the success, the paths of others, the positive bands anymore because there is no more self-doubt. She knows there is no need to conform. Her self-confidence in her path is now rooted in herself as a loner who walks her own path. The music she herself loves and is proud of. So even though she still doesn't approve of all these fake positive bands, she no longer fears them. She can look them in the eye and say, This is who I am. A beat her. She accepts it. The impulse of solitude. Now, I say solitude here, but this is actually a pretty bad translation. Koko means solitude, but also comes with the meaning of one who stands at a higher position than others, usually referring to the inner mind or morals. One who is able to stick to their ideals. That's why this sentence is Ryo accepting the consequences of her impulses, her will to walk her own path. I love the parallel of Koko and Kodoku. It's like Ryo can finally hold her head high in pride, knowing that her path is superior. While her heart were previously the clutches she desperately needed, it's now the wings she uses to fly. She no longer has to hide from the world to be herself. She has her heartbeat to prove that she is herself. And because of this, she doesn't want to hear anything else, just herself. The parallelism here is absolutely amazing. While the end result doesn't seem to differ so much with the exact same lyrics, with Ryo ultimately only wanting to hear her own sounds, the past Ryo did this out of desperation, the suffocating feeling of being crushed by that band's journey, trying to cling on to herself. But now, Ryo doesn't need your shitty music. Ryo just doesn't want to hear anyone else, cause her own sounds are the only things she wants. She doesn't need to shut herself off from the world anymore. She doesn't need to cling on to anything. She has simply fully accepted herself, her own sounds, and her heartbeat asserts it, giving two exact same sentences with completely different meanings. It's such a beautiful message. It's literally poem-esque storytelling within the lyrics of a single song with minimal information on the character's backstory. Bochi lyrics are incredible. We should put this shit in mandatory literature class. We need future generations to analyze the greatness of being alone for real for real. But what? Normies. They don't exist, you must be hallucinating. Now, now, it's okay. Take your pills and you'll be fine. That band is a song about that band. Shit. That band is a song about Liu's journey of self-acceptance. The self-acceptance of her identity as a loner, as one who chooses to walk her own path, even if it's out of the norm or different from others. What a beautiful journey Liu's path was. Or is it? G guys, I literally warned you. Fool you once, shame on me. Fool you twice. <laughs> What's interesting about the lyrics here is technically this overall journey could be applied to Bochi too. Bochi is also a loner, Bochi is also one who would reject the world for being an outcast and hide. Bochi is also someone who went after Leo's advice, decided to proceed with gloomy depressing lyrics, her true feelings. Lines like, I only want to hear the sounds I make, makes it even more convincing considering the shoebox Bochi works in and Bochi was technically saved by an Inkya band. If we take this song as a kind of the life lesson Bochi learned from Leo message, you can see parts where it fits. Especially with how Bochi looks up to Leo as an introvert who doesn't fear loneliness. 
Someone who is genuinely fine with isolation. Someone who genuinely likes being alone. However, I personally don't really like this interpretation because of a few problems. One is, we've never exactly seen Bochi struggle with this kind of self-acceptance as a loner thing. I would argue the whole point of Bochi is, she's lonely and she wants friends. She most certainly doesn't have the confidence to say shit like this and like, if that band isn't Luo's past band, Bochi never mentioned another band she ever had conflict with. Another band that made her feel like her path was wrong. In fact, Bochi literally covers popular songs despite being depressed, which feels contradictory to the whole message of the song. She also initially actually wrote fake happy lyrics before Leo convinced her not to, and she didn't have this big reaction or character development moment that would fit the message of this song. That's why I do truly stick to the idea that the song has to be about Leo's feelings. As for who wrote it, honestly there aren't any plot holes in saying Bochi wrote it. Leo's backstory was basically revealed by her directly telling Bochi, so as far as we know, Bochi knows as much about Leo as we do, and would be able to draw the same conclusions about her feelings. I say this without strong evidence, but I also feel like Bochi has a similar impression of Leo with us, the viewers. A cool, confident bassist who's had her struggles in the past, but is now confident in her love and knowledge for music, especially in her own individualistic way. And she's a bit of a bochi gold digger, but you know, that's not the point. Everyone has a flaw or two. We should forgive robbery. I personally still like the idea of Leo writing the song, because this song feels heavy. It carries the emotions of someone overcoming their past trauma, and I don't know, it feels weird to have a third person write and interpret these kinds of lyrics instead of being from the heart. After all, Leo is the one that truly understands the pain she went through during the band breakup. That being said, if you really like the headcanon that Bochi writes all the Kesokubando songs, then there's nothing wrong with thinking that Bochi wrote it. In fact, I almost think that it's left vague on purpose. And that's when I realized, if If I Could Be a Constellation is a song about the connection between Bochi and Kita, then perhaps that band is a song about the connection between Bochi and Ryo, and not necessarily in a two-way message kind of way. What Bochi and Kita shared were their feelings of insecurities, their admiration for each other, and what Bochi and Ryo share is their roles as loners who deeply love music. Just look at how much of the same wavelength they can be on. Ryo, the one who values individuality over anything, probably loves all of Bochi's weird quirks. I mean, who wouldn't like a personal metamorphosizing blob? Yu is also a massive introvert and has been through the hiding from the world feeling, so while she might not know social anxiety, she probably does understand the feeling of fearing the world, which is why she can be such a good mentor to Bochi. Which means, never forget is the connection between... Master Liu can be the one who mentally guides Bochi through her journey of music. To teach someone as frail to social pressure as Bochi to never give up her identity in her songs. And this very song, that band, is the story behind that lesson. What this song depicts is the journey of a lonely girl who found her way through her sheer will, through the blessings of an angel, through past experiences, through past comrades falling to the temptation of success. The girl walked her path of solitude, upholding her ideals in the pain of isolation, holding her most prized possession to her heart. What resulted were new comrades, now walking the true path of individualism, the path she once dreamt of. And to one who is seemingly lost to the terrors of the world, she is now able to say, unwaveringly, just write how you truly feel. Those words may not resonate with most people, but to those that it does, it will hit deep. If Guitar, Loneliness, and the Blue Planet is the story of a person's deepest feelings, then that band is the story behind that story. It is the story of what began it all.